This is Pick 6 presented by KFAN, and it has been a wild week for the NFL, so we figured we'd open up the mailbag another time this season. I feel like we've always say we're going to take breaks, but we really never do. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much to Voice of the Vikings, Paul Allen. And stepping in today for Gabe Henderson, we got Fox 9's Hobie Arteague hey. to hey. play the Pick 6 game for the first time. <laughs> we had all of your questions submitted via Twitter, and so let's get to the first one before we get to those questions, though, because i got to ask you guys, what is the biggest takeaway from the first official week of the NFL free agency PA 30 seconds on the clock uh, Devonte Adams goodbye and good riddance <laughs> and you are the anti vike meaning everything that is Vikings football you just made bad eight touchdowns over the course of two seasons a couple of seasons ago they targeted you 17 times and you were completely unstoppable Devonte Adams might be the best overall receiver in the NFL but he now is the problem of the American Football Conference and not the Minnesota Football Vikings. Devontae leaving Green Bay, that's numero uno. Leaving the division, leaving the conference, good riddance. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm going to continue that, PA. How about the mass exodus from the AFC as a whole, especially at the quarterback position? Mm. Whatever you look at Russell Wilson going mm. from the NFC, now into the AFC with the Denver Broncos, and also Matt Ryan going from the Atlanta Falcons, now with the Indianapolis Colts. Now, look. I'm not going to say that two of the best quarterbacks, two quarterbacks, by the way, who have played in Super Bowls will make the NFC any easier, maybe a little more manageable right now. But whenever you look at the other conference right now, the competition is really heating up, including Deshaun Watson now going to the Cleveland Browns. It will be interesting, though, what the NFC will hold, especially with Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers staying put. That also another surprise. Maybe we can reference it like that, but still. You hear the that, mass exodus that energy movies. right there, and he hit the 30. Beating Are you kidding me with, with this TV pro? He's, he's done TV a time or two. Hobie. Did I make it to the end zone? Bonjour. Como ça va? Oh, the French <laughs> language, such je ne sais quoi. I, 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 don't hey. have any, I don't have any fancy French for my 30 seconds of biggest <laughs> takeaways from the NFL free agency. Go. Mine is more back here in our backyard. I thought the Vikings really made a splash defensively by signing some veterans that not only add depth, but the veteran leadership. Walking away from Ooh. conversations with Jordan Hicks and Harrison Phillips on the podcast, these guys get it, and they're two different personality types. Plus the big splash that the Vikings made today. I mean, if they're not trying to make this defense that was last in the league, quote unquote, down there at the bottom, any better than that's it for you. You got to pick up the free agent. Yeah. Especially if you're going to a 3 4, then you got to get those big dogs on the outside just meeting everybody at the quarterback. Yeah, nobody wants to see that combo just yet. So mm -hmm. it'll be exciting to watch in training camp, which we'll get to in just a few months. But let's first get to your fan questions. We've got number two going to PA right here. Thoughts on still possibly trading Daniil Hunter as draft approaches, or does the $18 million bonus ensure at least? One more season with the Vikings. Well, you, you can trade him. Now, the question is, is there a market for Daniil off a peck injury and a weird neck injury the uh, year before that? And then you got to pay him. I want Daniil to play here. So, with Ed Donatel, Mike Pettin, and the rest of the defensive staff, which, by the way, includes Mike Smith, who coaches outside linebackers and is the, um, is the rush coordinator, I really, really like this defensive coaching staff, and it needs players. And Daniil is an accomplished player. So I hope Daniil stays, but sure, uh, if somebody wants him, then they could trade for him. All right, well, question number three. We'll go to the other side of the ball. This one is for you, Hobie. Connor C. asks this question. We have Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson. Now we've secured Captain Kirk. Will the Vikings transition to a more aerial offense instead of running the ball all the time? <laughs> I, you have oh, one of, come on. You have one of the best <laughs> running backs in football in Dalvin Cook. Of course you're going to have to run the football, but whenever you look at the Sean McVay coaching tree, you look at the branches with the Chargers, with the Packers, and also with the Bengals. All of those teams have now drifted toward throwing the football with some very talented quarterbacks. Yes, Justin Jefferson is going to get his targets. Adam Thielen will as well. My question, though, will the Vikings incorporate Dalvin Cook more in the passing game moving forward? One of those branches I mentioned in the L.A. Chargers, Austin Eckler, number two whenever it came to receptions by a running back in the 2021 season. Could Dalvin Cook see that type of role emerging here being a factor in the passing game? 35 seconds, Gabe, never goes past 33. <laughs> well, it is all about getting Throw a flag on the play, man. Come on. <laughs> 
clipping. We're, we won't do that here at Pick Six just yet. Maybe next time if you guys do, you know, go way too over. But let's try and keep this one 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. I've hit 30 I every know, time. We'll go Are with you question kidding me four. with this Bayou map? I don't know, though. You might need a little extra time on this one, PA. This uh, is from. Deux, trois, quatre, cinq. <laughs> this is from Dustin Motley. What do you see the Vikes doing about the number two quarterback? One, are you all in on Kellen Mond? Two, sign one in free agency, and who would that be? Or three, draft one in 2022. Du Bois Wonder 2002. That's right. Hey. Uh, well, the uh, Minnesota Vikings have re-signed Sean Mannion. And uh, uh, with all due respect to uh, a fair amount of the fan base, it's like, ah. But really, when you're bringing in the Sean McVay offense and the fact that Mannion knows it inside and out, and O'Connell, Kevin O'Connell being the coach and attacking the middle zone. That's really going to be where the cliched bread is buttered with this offense. Uh, you need Mannion with Cousins. Now you got Kellen Mond. Mondiacs go crazy. Seven touchdowns against LSU. I am also a fan of drafting a quarterback, raising him, cultivating him. Maybe we get lucky and he's good. I, I have to say, the fans <laughs> love questions about Kellen Mond, and you always seem to they always seem to fall in your lap to answer. Oh, that's, that's because you are trying to get me fired <laughs> up and like get me pissed off after a Packers game so that it goes viral on Twitter. Oh, wait, that was Gabe. Yeah, no, <laughs> definitely not me. I would never. I would yeah. never. Nice coverage, Eric, yeah. folks. <laughs> All right, Hobie, this question is for you. It's our fifth question of the day. Will the Vikings consider drafting George Karloftis at number 12? Tony Linder wants to know. Well, Tony, lo looking at – he's a great player, but I, I was looking more toward David Ajabo out of Michigan, but then he had that injury at their pro day. And with the news of Zadarius Smith, I think that outside linebacker, edge rusher, might be taken. But as for Karloftis right now, this is a guy who's a great power pass rusher from Purdue who can really get to the quarterback by using his physical size could be that fit at defensive end that the Vikings need in that 3-4 up front. My question though, what will that front three in a new defense look like for the Vikings? And is 12 too high of a pick to select a guy like that? And could corner, especially if one of those top two guys falls, is that going to be your pick at 12? I think that might be with where the roster stands right now of the utmost importance. Yeah, I mean, analysis. Yeah, when well, you start looking at the free agent signings and you don't see that corner just yet, you wonder mm -hmm. if that's the direction that this management will go towards in the draft. Only time will tell, but something very exciting happened today. Mm. The Vikings now have signed Zadarius Smith hey. to the mm. roster, and that one-two punch of Daniil Hunter and Zadarius Smith is very exciting, but I wanted to get, before we go, for the final question, I wanted to ask what's your favorite thing about the Smith signing? PA? Uh, mine would be, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, ever thought you would be saying this, by the oh, way, Zedaria Smith, he, Minnesota Vikings. He yeah, turned right. down four and 35 reportedly from the Baltimore Ravens. So, I mean, if Rob Brzezinski's uh, the Vikings are like looking between couch cushions for money or something, I don't know what it took to get Zedaria Smith, but I know when he's healthy, he's a bad you know what. And now he stays in the division, and he knows where the bones are buried with the Green Bay offensive line. <laughs> and again, Mike Smith coaches linebackers, outside linebackers, and handles that rush here. I love this. This is terrific, especially when he smacks number 12. And you mentioned whenever he is healthy, looking at 2019 and looking at 2020, this was a guy that had 20-plus sacks mm. in each of those seasons, is able to get after the quarterback. We've seen it with Kirk Cousins, whatever he's going after him. But also, PA, to the experience standpoint that you mentioned, this is a guy with 3-4 outside linebacker experience. A lot of these guys on the field for the Vikings defense with where it is right now, they don't really have that experience just yet. Whenever you bring a guy that is talented if he can stay healthy but that experience in that mind really could play dividends for the purple heading into the 2022 season Ooh, made up three seconds my man yeah. look at that now he's, look about at even for the day. he's about even <laughs> no. uh, my favorite thing is honestly you know you guys talk so much about his ability on the field and that is obviously mm -hmm. speaks for itself especially when you look at the stats column but I, I like the personality so far, too. I mean, you're getting these guys that seem like they're team guys. They're meshing well together. Um, I, I personally think it was very interesting that he uh, took us all on his free agent journey with him. We saw him show up here. That's something you're not used to seeing there in free agency. He seems like he's a little more open. He wants to let everyone know, I am here and I am interested in the Vikings. And that's something that I think is really, really exciting. 
um, especially the meet me at the quarterback tweet where he, yeah. you know, paid a little homage to the purple people. Somebody's been to the Vikings Museum. I love that. That's, you know, it's all part of the tour. You know, it's uh, all part of the tour. One thing I think it behooves to add here, seriously speaking, is with new general manager Kwesi Adolfo Mensa, the work he's doing not only for now, if, I mean, if they hit on things now, that's a bonus, that's terrific, but things are being framed up for two and three years down the road, and, and man, our, our GM gets it, doing a good job. He said it was a giant puzzle. He just has to put all the pieces together. And this week revealed a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Still a lot of more decisions to come. Thank you so much to Fox 9's Hobie RT, Voice of the Vikings, Good Paul you, Allen, you too, for buddy. being here for Pick 6. If you want to submit your questions for Pick 6 in a couple of weeks, make sure you tweet at us, at Tatum Everett or at Gabe A. Henderson. Be on the lookout because, you know, you guys make this show what it is, and we always appreciate you submitting. So this for them right now. Thanks for watching.